talk to you today. I'm talking with Maria Frank at the Toronto Zoo, and we're sitting in front of a panda enclosure. There is a, a male panda at the back there. Yes. When did the pandas arrive here, and why are they such a big attraction? Because people just seem to adore these animals. Yes, yeah, so we had our male, Demao, and our, our female, Oshun, arrive in 2013 um, as part of a five-year conservation breeding uh, loan from China. So they, they've kind of always been this this kind of sexy symbol for endangered species globally. Um, so I think they that's their attraction and just they're just really unusual looking animals. The black and white markings, um, their very large head, um, they, just people just seem to be completely attracted to giant pandas. Now you have a male panda and a, a female panda. In the movie we just see a female panda with the with the baby panda. Yes. Are males involved at all in the child's upbringing? No, giant pandas are solitary, um, and we respect that here at the zoo as well. So De Mao and Oshun are kept separately. Um, uh, we did try to introduce them for breeding, um, but uh, there's a lot of mate choice with, with animals, a lot, of the, a lot of people don't really understand or realize. So we tried to introduce Irshun and Dei Mao, um, but there was aggression by Irshun. So that's when we proceeded with artificial insemination and then the successful birth of our, of our cubs. But so it's no different. They, they come together. Giant pandas are only in estrus once a year for anywhere from a 24 to 72 hour period. So a very, very short window of time. That's when the males and females will get together to breed. And after that, they're back to being solitary. So the female will um, give birth and raise her offspring on her own. At what point are the cubs old enough that they go off, off on their own? Um, weaning can typically happen anywhere from 18 to 24 months. Um, typically, probably more 24 months in the wild where they're actually completely weaned. That's when the female will um, come into estrus again and she'll want to breed again. And so it's a natural dispersal process because again, as I mentioned, they're solitary. So it's up to those cubs to then disperse. And then as they sexually mature, be able to reach out and find their own mates and, and reproduce themselves. Now this couple, they're going to stay together because they're going to Calgary after this for another five years. Yes. Are they expected to have more children? Do you think that's in their future? Um, so again, it was artificial insemination. We don't really know if it is actually Dei Mao who's the father. We actually had sperm flown in from China from two other males. Um, the importance of that is to add really good genetics um, to have a healthy genetic captive population. So um, they will both be all four pandas will actually be going to Calgary. So Dei Mao Irshun and Jai Pan Pan are our male cub and Jai Yue Wei are our female cub. So they'll all be going um, together, but at that point, they'll all be maintained solitary. Um, and, and likely, I'm, I, I'm not sure, I can't really speak for our colleagues, but I'm sure that, that breeding is probably, or, or artificial insemination is, is likely in the cards for them in as the well. Movie. The red panda is, seems to be watching the giant panda and her cub. Do these two species interact at all in the wild? Um, they don't interact. They're completely different species. Um, the red panda is actually considered the true panda. They were actually discovered before the giant panda. Um, they're in a completely different classification. The red panda is more, it's in its own classification, kind of more related to a raccoon. Um, so they, they don't really interact. But the thing that's so amazing is that both species uh, were listed as endangered. The giant panda, because of the success of our Chinese colleagues, ha was actually downlisted last year to vulnerable, which is which is great, a step in the right direction, although they're not out of the woods. But, but all the efforts to go and save giant pandas is actually saving the red panda as well. So any other species that lives in the habitat of giant pandas is being saved by this kind of sexy, you know, global symbol for endangered species. Does that include snow leopards as well? Because they live in the same area. They live in the same area, not not similar habitat, but definitely. So the Born in Nature a movie, the thing I loved about it was some of the footage was incredible, mm -hmm. um, and the footage of these endangered, vulnerable species, um, but showing this incredible biodiversity of all those different animals living in, in the same region that most people won't ever be able to see in their lifetime and bringing that into the theaters and into into their homes it's incredible what's interesting is they have the same four seasons as we do their winter looked very similar to ours lots of snow cold yeah do zoo pandas go out in the snow uh, the same as wild pandas would yes absolutely um, uh, they love the snow uh, we do have various um, parameters so if it's minus 40 no um, but a lot of the times we give them their 
their their ability to make their own choice. So we have the doors open; they can come in or uh, go outside or come in. Um, Demel loves the snow. He loves to toboggan. He <laughs> he loves to slide down the hill. Literally, he will continue it, and he loves to. The keepers will make snowmen as in Richmond, and he loves to like fight and play with snowmen. So they love the snow. The the one factor we have to be conscious of is is really really hot hot temperatures. Um, they they are from colder, high elevation um, climate. So uh, we have air conditioned day rooms. So if it gets way too hot, they can go in and, and chill off in, in our air conditioned areas for them. Something I found interesting in the movie was that the snow leopard, um, she was kind of shoved out of her territory by another snow leopard with three adult sons. Yes. How long do the children of snow leopards stay with the mothers? Um, again, solitary in the wild, you'll typically only see females with offspring. Um, I thought that was actually quite unusual as well, that, that the sons were of such an age. Um, but again, it's typically anywhere from two, two and a half years. Um, it also depends on food availability. So they obviously were able to muscle in on that territory given that there was strength in numbers and able to chase that female off her prey. Um, so as long as that's kind of working cohesively, but the minute the female comes into estrus, it's likely that she will um, completely remove herself from her sons and, and try to, to match up with a, an adult breeding male. And when do the snow leopard cubs, when are they able to survive on their own? Um, typically not until they've completely weaned, but even then that the, the mother, um, uh, offspring connection there is they have to learn how to hunt so they rely on their mother well after being weaned um, to hunt and to learn from them on how to hunt so um, in the movie it was very unfortunate that that the snow leopard female um, had so much trouble and it's very likely at that age that the cubs would likely not survive okay. um, what protections are in place for these kinds of animals and what is being done for endangered species such as these and what can people do in their own homes just to help. Mm -hmm. So so this region of China, it's it's at very high elevation. Um, so so golden snub monkeys, that they, they're actually one of the the non-human primates that can take cold, the coldest, you know, temperate um, conditions, snow leopards, pandas, are all geared to this cold climate. Um, and uh, because of that, because of the high elevation, they're very susceptible to climate change. Um, as the temperatures warm, um, their, their habitat might shrink. So they're already facing their habitat shrinking by the ever hu human population growth. So adding climate change to that could have a huge impact on their natural habitat. So anything that people can do to help prevent climate change, uh, decrease CO2 emissions, carbon emissions, so don't idle your car, recycle, be, be good consumers, turn your, turn your thermostat down a couple of degrees and put on a, a sweater, anything that can, can help global uh, climate change. Also, there's various facilities like the Toronto Zoo, we have a Toronto Zoo Endangered Species Reserve Fund, so if they donate funds to that fund, 100% of that goes to saving species in their wilds. Um, so it's very important, I think, uh, born in nature, uh, uh, a Born in China story and Disney Nature did a great film showing the biodiversity in this area and um, hopefully it, it inspires people to want to do something to save all those species in their natural habitat. Fantastic. Thank you so much for talking to me today. Thank you.